Hey everybody, my name is Deja and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm starting my Summerween reading vlog. I'm really, really excited for this readathon. I love it so much. If you don't know, this readathon is basically to celebrate Halloween and Halloween vibes in the summer. And they also have a winter version called Winterween to do the same kind of thing. And this is hosted by Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte and Gabby from Gabby Reads. This readathon is a pretty big one, so I love seeing everybody's content and I feel like it really brings the community together. I just love it so, so much and I really like the prompts this year. I'm going to go over the prompts. I have a lot of books that I want to read during this readathon and I probably will not get to all of them and I'm not going to go over all of them I'm going to go over basically the main five prompts and then also two other books that I would really like to get to during the week and some of these are pretty short so I'm hoping that I can get through all of them so the first prompt is to read a book in the dark or at night and this one I'm probably just going to read at night I chose a shorter one for this one and that is Deep Trouble which is a Goosebumps book by R.L. Stein. I didn't really read Goosebumps growing up but I read a couple when I was in middle school and really enjoyed them I saw this one at a little free library and thought it would be perfect for Summerween because obviously it looks like it's about a killer shark of some sort and it says swimming lessons won't help you now I don't know anything else about this but I saw it and I was like that's perfect for Summerween and this is kind of what's inspiring me to also watch Jaws because I feel like that movie even though I haven't watched it that it's like the perfect summer horror movie so I'm really excited to try this one out the next one that I have is Not So Perfect Strangers by L.S. Stratton and this one is for the prompt read a thriller. I believe that this one is about a black woman who's leaving her abusive husband who also meets a white woman in a similar situation and it discusses themes of how even though they may be going through a similar situation their everyday lives are very much different and how white women have a lot of privilege over black women even if they're in similar situations. I believe that's what it's about. I will tell y'all more obviously when I actually start the book. Next up is the prompt read a book set in the fall and for that one I'm going to go with Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This one I actually had no idea has a movie which is really cool but this one takes place Halloween 1963 so it definitely takes place in the fall. There's somebody called October Boy old hacksaw face or saw tooth jack i have no clue what this is about like most of these books but i've heard pretty good things about this and i see a lot of people reading this for like summerween around halloween things like that so this is the one that i went with and i actually put on my tbr and i saw it at barnes and noble when i went a couple days ago so i picked up a physical copy the next prompt is to read a book with black or orange on the cover and for this one i'm going to go with camp slaughter this one obviously seems like it's perfect for summer because it, it takes place in a cabin i'm pretty sure or at a camp i'm not sure if it's it's a cabin or camp and there is some slaughtering it is a slasher for sure this one's on kindle unlimited so i don't have a physical copy of it but i've heard really good things about this one it has some like black gray vibes on the cover so that's why i thought that this one could definitely pass for this prompt it's a little bit of a stretch but i'm gonna go with it anyways because i really would like to read it and the last one is to read a graphic novel, manga, or novella. And this one is not technically a novella, but it's just over 200 pages. So I'm counting it anyways. And that is The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. This one also takes place in the summer and it's a irresistible coming of age story, which is not my favorite, but it seems like it's going to give like Stranger Things vibes because it takes place in the 80s in the summer. When I picked this up, I saw it as a $5 book at Barnes & Noble, like the cafe pick. So I picked it up and then I saw it everywhere after that and I found out which I did not know that Craig Davidson is actually Nick Cutter which if you have not seen the reading vlog where I read it or my June wrap up you may not know that I hated it. The Deep by Nick Cutter which I read in June last month. I absolutely hated it and I thought the ending was so stupid. I do enjoy the troop though so I'm hoping that this one can kind of redeem itself a little bit for me but yeah so those are the main books that I have for the prompts. I don't think that this is too bad and then including Camp Slaughter but these three are all pretty short and I have audiobooks for a couple of them but I also would really like to get through Pen Pal this week as well. This one does not have an audiobook anywhere so that's really what's been putting me off of this book and not having been able to read it but I've been putting this on TBRs like basically every single month since the year started and this is the month that I read it. I need to read it. And I also put it as one of my prompts for my spinner wheel that I do 
to decide my TBR every month. So if I don't get to it this week, I will definitely still be reading it later in the month. But I would really like to get to it this week. And then also, I have one other thriller that I would really like to read. And that is All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby. This one is a little bit longer. But I love S.A. Cosby's work. I read two of his works and I gave one 5 stars and I gave one 4.5. And I really do enjoy his work. This one sounds like it's right up my alley because it has a serial killer. And I believe a detective perspective. So I think this one could honestly be my favorite S.A. Cosby. I'm really excited to pick it up. And I do have the audiobook of this one. I don't have the physical copy yet. But I do have the audio. So right now I have the audiobooks of these two plus all the sinners bleed but I do want to get through these two first and then these two and Camp Slaughter I don't have an audiobook so I think I'm going to start with one that has an audiobook because it is actually like 11 a.m on the first day and I've been doing work for my remote job and I will continue to do work for a while so I think I'm going to start off with a sh very short one Dark Harvest just so I can like knock a book out I am hanging out with a friend later tonight so I probably won't be able to read at all tonight so I definitely will try and prioritize reading a bit today instead and yeah I'm really really excited to get into this one because it seems like it's going to be really cool I'm not exactly sure what type of horror this leans so depending on that could really affect my enjoyment of this but it is pretty short it's only 170 ish pages so I'm going to start on this one for my very first read so I wanted to update y'all I'm only like 50 pages in it to dark harvest but I actually have to go to my sister's house because my internet is not working and I need to do work for my remote job so I'm gonna go to her house and I don't know if I'll be able to update if I make it further but um it's about a fourth of the way into it and so this follows Halloween 1963 with this specific town it's a midwestern town and they have like this ritual every single year where there's this man or this it's not a man it's this thing called the October boy and the October boy makes its way towards the town and kind of lures boys in but the boys are also like hunting him and they're all teenage boys and they're locked up in their house for five days prior to this ritual and I think they have to be like 16 years old to participate and they are trying to hunt the October boy but um he is also trying to hunt them and I think whoever like hunts him off or gets him to go away or kills him but I think he comes back every year so I don't know exactly what happens but whoever is able to like kill him or make him go away um basically their whole family is prized for the next year and they basically get whatever they want and so we follow one main boy named Pete and he wants to basically kill the October boy because he wants to escape from this town he thinks that it's going to have a dead end life if he stays here so he wants to go away and be able to just like live his life somewhere else and he knows that this is his one chance and this is actually told in an interesting way like it is third person narrator where they're basically like telling you what's happening to this character and there's also a couple of the characters that we're following but they also are kind of talking to us in second person where they're like they'll tell the story but they'll be like oh you already knew that or you're smarter than them and so it's kind of a mixture of third person and second person which I think is really interesting it's literally like someone is telling us a story and apparently the October boy also lures them in with this candy I don't know but it seems really interesting so I'm excited to continue on I may or may not be finished with this the next time that I talk to y'all so it is actually the next day and I'm about somewhere between a third and a half way through Dark Harvest. So not too much further. I only really listened to it when I was driving because I was at my sister's house for hours and I, you know, want to talk with my family instead of just listening to an audiobook while I was doing my work. And then as soon as I left there, I came back, like changed or whatever. And then I went to my friend's house. We had a great night and I ended up sleeping over there for a couple hours and I came back here and then I was sleeping on and off until like noon and then um I got a big Shein package that's what that garbage is that was a big Shein package that I got um of clothes for a trip that I'm going on at the end of July so I got a whole bunch of new clothes I was trying those on putting those away everything like that and just kind of like chilling and now I'm actually going to go to the gym and I have a change of plans so I'm gonna put a pause on Dark Harvest for now because all the sinners bleed I did not realize I only have two days left for the audiobook being checked out from my library and there's seven people waiting so like I low-key need to get through it now and it's a little bit longer it's 13 hours so it's gonna take me a bit but I'm hoping to kind of buckle down and 
like listen to a good portion of it today when I come back from the gym because I don't really have much to do. Um, I have a video already ready to go up tomorrow on Sunday so I don't really have to edit a video so I'm probably just gonna play The Sims or do my diamond painting or something like that and I'm kind of bored today low-key like I want to go outside but I don't even know what to do like so I'm just gonna go to the gym and then um, I'm going to listen to more of All the Sinners Bleed. I'm only 6% of the way in, so I don't really feel like I could tell y'all an accurate synopsis yet. But when I get a little bit further in, I will come back and tell y'all an actual synopsis for the book. Yesterday I had a really fun night where I was just on FaceTime with some of my friends So I didn't really read that much yesterday either and it's day three of summer ween I have not finished a single book so we are buckling down today and we are reading it is 1:30 in the afternoon I've been up for a little bit been listening to my audiobook. I made some breakfast and so We are getting things done. Also, sorry the lighting's really bad it is really stormy today or it hasn't stormed yet but it's supposed to it had really bad storms yesterday which i love the summer rain so i don't really mind i mean i love rain every single season but something about like summer or fall rain hit different for me so i don't really mind it but i am a third of the way into all the sinners bleed and i am loving it it has that classic essay cosby writing that's so it's like a lyrical in some ways and very straightforward in other ways we're following this man titus and he is a detective in this small southern town that is very racist there's a lot of black people but there's also a lot of white people how southern towns are obviously because um southern towns do normally have or they can have a higher population of black people because of slavery and so he actually used to work for the fbi but he stepped down we're not exactly sure but he stepped down and he basically moved back to his hometown and decided that he was going to run for sheriff and he won and he deals with a lot of racism from the people in the town we literally just got a flash flood warning i'm not kidding it says this is dangerous and life-threatening do not travel if you're fleeing an area subject to flooding or under an evacuation order. He's faced a lot of racism from the white people in the community, but then also the black people don't trust him because they think that he's like obviously like for the other side. He works with the police and there's a lot of nuanced discussions around black people being involved in the police, which I really am enjoying these discussions because one of my majors is criminology. And so if I work in a criminal justice field or in a criminological field, obviously there is a lot that comes with that. And he definitely discusses that a lot, which I'm loving. And so one day in this small town they are alerted that there is a school shooting so they go pull up there and there was a previous student wearing a mask saying something about like the demon or devil or something and he had a gun and started charging at them so they shot and killed him it was a young black boy and I think he was probably like 20 like ye early 20s and then they went inside and found a beloved beloved school teacher who everybody in the town has loved he's taught so many people it was a geography teacher he was found shot dead by this student or previous student and so they're not exactly sure why this happened and there's some outcry from the black people in the town that they shot in black man and they didn't necessarily know what was going on with him and they shot him and then they obviously decide like to look through everybody's phone just to try and um, understand motive and when they're looking through the teacher's phone they find pictures of basically like snuff with children yeah like children's snuff related uh, content so then they go get a warrant for his house and they find even more of this content and can definitely tell that he was involved as well so now it's opening up this big thing but there's also somebody else that they believe was involved but they're not exactly sure who so they're on a hunt to try and figure out who this is and try and find some of these bodies because there were some people that they know for sure were killed in the video some children um like younger teenagers they know for sure they were killed so obviously now they have like a serial killer on their hands and 
they have to understand how this teacher and this ex-student were connected and a lot of these children were black children as well especially the ones that were killed were black um they did have some white children involved but the ones that were killed were black so I'm loving the discussions and the nuance around police and this town also has a really deep history and like roots with religion so there's also been some discussions of religion and I'm really excited to see more like religious trauma kind of get unearthed through this story and it is just so so good like this is the perfect plot for me I've always said since I heard about this book that I think this is going to be my favorite essay Cosby because it just it has zero killer it has um snuff related stuff it has a detective perspective and he's a black man that is talking about the nuance of being a black police officer and he even now has experience with the fbi and he talks and he talks about that and it is just so good so i'm hoping to finish this one today and i definitely think i could finish my diamond painting i have one section and then the top section left so i think i could definitely finish that today while listening and then i also really want to finish dark harvest and i'm also thinking maybe i can read my goosebumps tonight and hopefully start reading one of my other physical books that i have because some of them don't have audiobooks and i kind of need to get a jump start on those like camp slaughter or pen pal so I have a lot of reading plans today. I was gonna go Halloween decor hunting today, but with the storms and everything, I literally had to drive through that yesterday and because I was like out already and it just started downpouring and I'm like not dealing with that again. So maybe we can go tomorrow if it's not raining. Uh, yeah, so, and I also have sprints with my patrons tomorrow, so hopefully I can get a lot of reading done tomorrow as well. I have a lot of big plans for reading today. I've also been watching Sarah Sprints, but she says she's not going to sprint for as long today. But regardless, I'm still going to be reading. I definitely, definitely need to finish All the Sinners Bleed today and Dark Harvest at the bare minimum. Hopefully I can read more than that though. So it is actually like 10 p.m. and I'm still not done, but I should be finishing soon. I just literally had to take a nap earlier but I'm almost done. I have about a little over an hour left. I'm a third of the way in or two thirds of the way in I meant to say and not a ton has happened but this book is keeping me very intrigued and on my the edge of my seat. I would honestly think if you like Karen Slaughter specifically her Grant County series I think that you would really really like this because I feel like they have a lot of similarities in the way that it's being told the pacing the content but this obviously has more commentary specifically with religion and also with race which are two things that I really enjoy so I'm really liking this because I love Karen Slaughter so add that in is really making it an amazing experience and then obviously kind of has the cadence that S.A. Cosby writes in and then also Titus is very similar to S.A. Cosby's previous characters that I've read normally like older black men and not older but like more like middle-aged black men is who he's written from like razor blade tears and blacktop wasteland so i definitely am getting that vibe so this is really like a perfect mashup between S.A. Cosby and Karen Slaughter into a book which I'm literally loving like I can't see this book being anything but a five star and it's going to be on my favorites of the year list like it's so good I'm working on my diamond painting I'm not done yet but I think I could potentially oop I think I could potentially finish it in the hour we'll see and if not I still have an hour left of dark harvest and as I said I'm definitely going to finish at least those two today so let me get back to reading so I can actually get through some of these summer ween books so I'm not gonna lie to y'all I've been so dead to the world today. Literally, I slept the entire day because this morning at 6 a.m. I woke up with a migraine right here and I was literally throwing up. I was sobbing. I could not go to sleep. It was terrible and I even called out of my remote job. Plus, my internet wasn't really working and I didn't want to go anywhere because I had a migraine. So, I didn't do any work today and I, when I tell you, I slept the whole day. I literally slept the whole day day like i was gone dead to the world i will say that i finished all the sinners bleed last night and i literally loved it it's gonna be getting five stars it's definitely gonna be on my favorites of the year it had me so emotional i really felt like i was on a journey with our main character titus i literally loved him and i feel like if you enjoy karen slaughter you would definitely like this book i think it's very reminiscent as i said earlier i think of her grant county series it's a little bit different than the other two books that i've read from sa cosby because i feel like 
his other two books have, were a little bit more fast paced and gory and this wasn't as much but I still really really loved it and this one was honestly like more of my alley with the pacing than his other stories because his other stories are kind of giving like action movie at some par parts and I'm not a huge action movie fan this one was definitely giving like small town detective trying to figure some stuff out and definitely was going with that pace like I just literally loved it so 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 much and I can't recommend it enough unless you don't like detective perspectives I think you might still enjoy this one because the man he's just such a, a such a good man to be in the head of you know what I'm saying but it is a detective perspective which I know some people don't like and then earlier today I finished Dark Harvest and I think I'm going to give this one 3.5 stars. And I think it's good to read around spooky season for sure. I mean, Summerween, we're celebrating Halloween now. But I think if you're doing anything spooky or you want spooky vibes, I think this one would definitely be good for that. And I think it's a good spooky season read, but it's not one that's going to stand up against just like all of the rest of the books. But for the spook spooky books, it's good. And um, I liked how it ended. I thought it was really interesting. And I thought this was going to be more straightforward than it was. But it did have a little bit more depth and plot to it, which I definitely enjoyed so it's getting 3.5 stars from me now I'm going to try and physically read I don't know how that's gonna go but I'm on sprints with my patrons right now so I'm gonna try and do some physical reading and I at least want to try to get through this goosebumps tonight it's not dark outside and I know if I put the b-roll in here I started reading this yesterday uh, during the day but it was like dark because it was raining like me and my dog were sitting by the door while it was raining and it was literally like if i closed all the doors it literally was like it seemed like it was nighttime inside because it was so dark outside we had no light coming in through the window at all and so i started this then and i got about like 20 pages in and so i'm hoping to finish this tonight it's not dark outside and it's not dark in here but it's past 7 20 so i feel like it's nighttime to me so i'm going to try and finish this and then i don't think i'll be able to do much more reading than that because the migraine is still just like lingering around but i do have the audiobook of not so perfect strangers which i do really want to start and i'm probably going to get the audiobook for the saturday night ghost club as well even though i'm scared that i'm not going to like this one just because of like this whole migraine situation basically took away a whole day of summer ween for me and i also just like have been slacking a little bit so i'll probably get the audiobook for this one as well and then i would only really need to read camp slaughter physically and hopefully pen pal as well i'm hoping that i can get through those four books in three days we'll see if i have audiobooks it'll be really helpful because during my job i can listen to audiobooks and i'll probably have a lot of work tomorrow so yeah i'm gonna go spread my patrons and Yesterday on my sprints with my patrons, I finished Goosebumps Deep Trouble by R.L. Stein. And this we basically follow this boy and his sister. And they have a uncle who is like a marine biologist or like some sort of ocean scientist. And every single summer they go to visit him on his boat while he's doing research. This time there is some speculation that there might be a mermaid and some other things occur with like sharks and things like that. This was honestly really such a fun time. I'm going to give it four stars because I just had a really good time reading it and it was super nostalgic and super quick to just fly through. With my patrons, I also discussed getting rid of the Saturday Night Ghost Club because ever since I found out that this is by Nick Cutter, I just don't want to read it. So instead, I'm keeping Read a Book for Fall or Read a Book Set in Fall, which was supposed to be Dark Harvest. I'm keeping that one the same. Then for Read a Book with Orange or Black on the cover, since I read All the Sinners Bleed, this can definitely count definitely as orange and like some darker black tones on the cover. So I'm going to read be counting that for this prompt for read a book in the dark i did deep trouble and then so what i have left is read a thriller and for that one i'm still going to go with 
the not so perfect strangers and then for read a graphic novel slash manga slash novella i'm doing camp slaughter this one is a little bit longer of a novella it's still under 300 pages the audiobook is around seven hours for those who don't know an average audiobook like a 300 page book is around nine hours so it is definitely a little shorter i've already started camp slaughter i'm not sure how far into it i am and we had a pretty long prologue with some slicing and dicing that occurred that i really was enjoying it was very much nostalgic to me it was giving like Leatherface combined with Jason which I was really enjoying and I love reading horror from authors of color so I'm excited to continue reading this one and so far we had the prologue where a couple got murdered by this man and now we're following two other perspectives kind of like a group of teenagers and some people who want to like figure out what is going on at Camp Slaughter because these are not the first people to disappear slash get murdered at this specific cabin or near this cabin so that's all that I've gotten to so far um, for most of today, I could have listened to the audiobook of Camp Slaughter, but I just was not in the mood for that. I was actually having like a really emotional morning and I had a lot of work to do because I didn't do work yesterday because of my migraine. So I'm hoping that I can read a little bit more tonight of Camp Slaughter. I do just have those two books that I definitely need to finish for all the prompts. I have backups and stuff, as I said, but I think with the migraine and I feel like I've been in a reading slump for a while and I've just been trying to push through and I was hoping that it was going to work and I think that it's not working. I just feel a little slumpy still so yeah I was gonna go see uh Cloverfield tonight at the movie theater that I like to go to Alamo Draft House but I'm kind of like not in the mood for that right now it's also at like 9 30 it's super late so when I come back I'm super tired and last time I went to a 9 30 showing for Terror Tuesday I almost fell asleep so I don't think I'm gonna do that tonight. I think I might just stay in and chill, but I'm about to go to the gym because I haven't gone in a couple days due to my migraine and also being lazy. So I'm gonna go to the gym right now and I will talk to y'all later. And then something really spooky occurred. So I got sick. <laughs> it is days after summer weed has ended. I was waiting to update this vlog after I finished Camp Slaughter, but the last like two days of summer weed, I was sick, so I barely read. And um, I ended up finishing Camp Slaughter. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun slasher. It felt like an actual like slasher movie in a book. And some people I know complain about that because they're like, if you've seen every any plot of a slasher movie, you would know what happens in this. But I love slasher movies. So seeing it in a book was really, really fun for me. So I really enjoyed that one. And then throughout the rest of the week, you saw throughout this vlog that I ended up finishing All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, which I gave five out of five stars. I absolutely adored that book. And then I read Dark Harvest which i think i said i was gonna give 3.5 stars but i'm lowering it down to three it was a fun spooky time but it's not anything memorable and i probably won't think about it really again maybe around spooky season but that's it as a recommendation and then i also read goosebumps deep trouble which i ended up giving four stars because it was really fun and fast-paced and nostalgic to read like a middle grade book but i do wish it was a little bit more like spooky leaning it didn't really feel like it was supposed to be like scary at all even for children so i do wish it had a little bit more more like spooky elements to it so overall we had a three star two four stars and a five star which i would say is pretty good and all the centers bleed is like favorite of all time favorite of the year so i definitely would say that summer ween was a win even though i was sick so thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to the end leave the little ghost emoji down below and i will see y'all my next one bye everybody